Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Crossroads Rebuild. I'm so excited you're here and I'm so excited about the progress that's being made on the Interceptor. So as you saw at the beginning of the video, I actually spent the other day getting a few things taken care of up front. Got the cowling and the wipers put back together, a few other things up under the hood. Got the headlights installed, got the uh, grill test fitted, although that is gonna have to come off before I can do the bumper. And I'd really like to continue moving on with the front end of the car because I'm so excited to see what the interceptor is going to look with its entire face back uh, but it's actually not ready for that because I'm waiting on a few wiring harnesses and a few other little odds and ends uh, before I can do that so what I'm actually going to do now is move my attention to the interior there's several things that need to be done in there things that need to be put back together so the first thing I'm actually going to do is get it all opened up get all the stuff that I'm storing in there right now out of there some spare parts and all of that get it all emptied out so I can see what I'm working with then over here on this rear passenger door, I need to go ahead and build that door back up uh, and put some things on that were missing when I got it. And then we can get to installing seat belts and a few other things. I've actually got some exciting things to show you today that I think you're really going to like. So let's go ahead and keep working on the Interceptor. So the interceptor's all cleaned out now, got all the stuff out of it. To be clear, it's not clean yet. I still need to clean it, but we've got all the stuff out of it. And so now I'm ready to go ahead and build up this door. Now, this door uh, did not come with a door panel on it. And I learned after the fact by doing a little bit of research and kind of looking at what we were working with here, um, I'm pretty sure that this vehicle was used for prisoner transport, at least over here on this back uh, passenger side. Um, now, as you know, as I pointed out in an earlier video, it did not come with a traditional back seat. Uh, these interceptors, a lot of them, the back seats were pulled out immediately before they were even put in service uh, so the departments could do something different with them. And that's what they did with this one. So it didn't have a back seat. And when I bought it, it didn't have the door panel on this side either. Um, I was a little bit concerned about that because it seemed like I'm missing some stuff. Not only a door panel, but a door handle and... Uh, the window motor, uh, not the motor, the motor's in there, but the, the window control. So as I got to looking at this thing a little bit closer, I started noticing that it had holes in it where something was screwed into it, and, uh, and it had it up here as well. But we fixed that, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Uh, but what I began to realize, this thing probably had bars over the window, and they have these um, panels that replace the original factory panel that are completely smooth and don't have any controls on them, so that obviously the prisoner uh, can't get out of the vehicle. Um, so, what I did was when we did the painting and the rest of the body work on this thing, uh, Jack helped me out and we went ahead and welded up the holes here and uh, painted over this so that uh, this part that will be exposed is completely, uh, it's, it's nice now, it looks great. And then uh, under here, everything else will be covered by the new replacement panel anyway, uh, so I'm not worried about those holes, uh, that'll just be part of the history of the vehicle. So what I'm gonna do now is I have to kind of take this apart a little bit and uh, undo the kind of temporary storage they did of some of the, the, the door systems. Uh, for example, I was concerned that it didn't have uh, window control. Well, I actually do have window control. They bagged it up and tossed it in the door. So that's great news. I've got the wiring harness here. I'll take this off and be able to put that into my new panel. Uh, I do have speaker wiring here as well, but it didn't come with a speaker. So I found to use one of those on eBay, a couple of bucks. I'll throw that in and we'll have a speaker. And then the door controls, uh, the, the handle, um, the handle itself is part of the door panel. So what they did was they just zip tied the cable that attaches to the handle up here inside the door. So thankfully, all the parts of the door that I need, other than the panel itself, are still here. I'll just be able to take that apart and put it all back together the way Ford originally had it together. And this will be a perfectly functional uh, rear door for my rear passengers. So that's what I'm gonna work on now. I'm gonna go ahead and get that replacement panel out and get to putting this door back together. And then we'll move on to the uh, rest of the interior. And I've got a few things to tell you about that when we get there. It's so pretty. It's the cleanest interior panel for this whole vehicle. It's not 100% mint, but it's close enough. 
So here's my replacement panel. Um, when I bought these, I actually had to buy two because I could find just the driver's side and I could find sets of two. I could not find just the passenger side for some reason. So I ended up going with the best deal I found, which was for a set of two. So I've got a replacement for the rear. If you need one, hit me up, let me know. My email is in the uh, comment section below. Uh, but um, I've got the panel I need. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the door set up and ready to go. I'm gonna put the uh, plastic piece back in, get the um, speaker installed, and then we'll get this panel on there. That door will be put back together here very quickly. Let's go. See, this is why you don't get rid of anything until the project is over, because you never know when you may need to harvest some parts off of it. My new speaker did not come with bolts to hold it in, and the old door, or the door didn't come with bolts either. So now I've got those, we'll get the speaker installed, and keep going. Make sure that speaker works before I button up this door. All right. I don't want to turn on anything that's going to get me a copyright strike, but let's at least turn something on. Can you hear any static coming out of that door, Erica? Yep. See, all you need is static to make sure the speaker works. Well, that will dry up with time. We'll go ahead and put this door panel on now. You know what this door doesn't have? <clears throat> ah, brother. What? It doesn't have any of the little push jobbers that are gonna actually attach it to the dog on it. That's gonna be a problem. You know what else it doesn't have? Or what? you know what? I bet you it's in here somewhere. It doesn't have the uh, little knob. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna have to undo this. <laughs> is done it's ready to go now it's time to start working on seat belts and all of that system putting it back together i'm gonna go ahead and pull it outside because there's a lot more light out there uh, so i can work on it out there and uh, we'll go ahead and chat about something that i think you're gonna like a lot when we get it out there
Erica's driving the Interceptor for the first time. What do you think? Are you going to like driving that? Yeah, it fits. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so to finish up the interior, we've got to get all of the airbag system put back together. Now, actually, I'm going to go ahead and roll some footage here in just a second of the very first thing I actually did on the interceptor as far as the start of the rebuild was actually removing the old, uh, removing the seat belts and the SRS module and all that so I could get it sent off. I worked with Safety Restore for this one to do uh, the reset on my seat belts and the reset on the SRS module. I've got a replacement airbag here for the steering wheel. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll some footage now for you so you can see what the process of taking all the seat belts out is like. And uh, then I've got something exciting to tell you about as well. All right, going out to the interceptor to remove the airbag module and front seat belts. I'm going to start with the airbag module. Now, normally in these Explorers, there's a console right here. And so you've got to actually remove that entire console uh, because they keep the um, SRS module, the airbag module down there on the floor between or underneath the um, center console. On the interceptor, however, it doesn't come with a center console. The police department puts their own in, which they removed after the accident. And so it's just right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. Looks like just three eight millimeters and two connectors. So we'll have that out in just a moment and then we will move on to the seat belts. And boom, and there she is, she's free. And I am just gonna take these now and just kinda hand screw them back in place so that I don't lose track of them. All right, as far as these front seat belts go, it looks like, obviously I've got to take off all of this uh, trim, but it looks like I probably have to take off this grab handle first because there's probably screws that hold that in. Then more than likely, this panel will just pop right off and that'll get me access to uh, my top mount and the adjustable uh, seat belt thing then this panel is already half removed so there's probably not much left to do there and uh somewhere down here in the bottom yep right down there will be a bolt so i'll get uh this panel the rest of the way out figure out what bolts those are and go from there all right so I've already unplugged this here. Uh, that is the, um, you know, uh, electrical connection to uh, this retaining mechanism. So there's some pyrotechnics in here that pull down on the seat belt from down here uh, and retract it. Um, then there's also in the winding mechanism, there's another one. So uh, there's probably a plug on this one. Yep, it's right here. So we'll pop that off. Might have to get it from the other side. Yeah, I'll have to get that from the other side in a minute, but we'll unplug that as well. And then uh, we'll be able to take this one off pretty easily with just one bolt, but this thing is still in my way and it's kind of held in place by that. So I'm gonna go get this out first, then come back and get the winding mechanism. And uh, you can kind of see down there, there's a bolt right there. And then there's, I think maybe two more I don't know if you can even see that. Two more there in the front underneath that as well. So they're kind of hard to get to because this thing kind of being held in place, but that's what I'm gonna work on next. For the record, <laughs> those front two aren't necessary. It's just the one bolt. And then uh, there's also a little clip that uh, clips into a part on the body on the floor there. Uh, and that pulls that out. And uh, the other two are just part of the seat mount. So I'm gonna put that one back so I don't lose track of it. And we're not gonna worry about torquing that because we'll have to take it out again to put the new one back. So. That seat belt's completely out now. Uh, there are actually two uh, T50 Torx. I overlooked that one. And then one half uh, inch uh, bolt that's part of the uh, seat mount that holds this in place 
and then two pyrotechnic connectors, two uh, airbag type connectors on the seatbelt winder, and then one plug on this guy as well. So, passenger side is out. Time to do the driver's side, which might be a little more tricky because I had to move this seat or this seat up out of the way to get to it. The seat's uh, manual, so no big deal. That seat's partially power, so we'll see how hard that one is to get to. All right, one more thing about these seat belts I want to show you. Uh, I wasn't going to show you the driver's side just because, uh, you know, it's the same as that one, basically. Uh, but there is one thing I forgot to show you over there, and that is the way uh, that this bottom connector connects. Uh, let me come to the other side. It might be easier to show you. There's actually... It's a little bit difficult to see. But down here... I'm hitting my seatbelt right now. There is a little slot uh, that a flathead screwdriver will fit into. I believe it's a left turn, a counterclockwise turn, and uh, the seatbelt part will just release from that bottom. So let me go ahead and show you how that works here real quick. All right, flathead in there, and turn that. Boom. And that whole thing comes out super easy, no big deal. And then that is actually part of that pyrotechnic that's down here underneath this plastic trim panel, which I can now get off a lot easier because that's off. All right, there we go. All right, it's almost 90 degrees out here. I'm hot, I'm sweaty, but I did get both seat belts and both uh, tensioners and the airbag module out of the interceptor. Uh, one little uh, note, if you are working on an Explorer or an interceptor like this one, uh, for whatever reason, the driver's side um, is not the same as passenger side. Um, passenger side had two of those airbag connectors into the seatbelt and it had two uh, T50 Torx bolts holding it in place as I showed you. On the driver's side there was just one of those um, airbag type connectors in the seatbelt and um, just one bolt holding it in as well. So no idea why there's a difference but there is. I guess that's just something for you to be aware of if you're working on one of these yourself. So one of the things that I wanted to accomplish with this Interceptor is not just take a wrecked police car and turn it into a daily driver, although I'm doing that. But I also want this vehicle to be something of a tribute vehicle, a police tribute vehicle. I'm not going to put all sorts of stickers on it make it look like an old police car. Um, actually, I don't want to ever be accused of impersonating a police officer with this thing. It's going to look like, you're going to be able to tell that it used to be a police car, um, but without all the lights and all of that. But I wanted to do a couple of things with this that kind of that show my support for the police and make this something of a tribute to the police force and what this vehicle used to be. So with that in mind, when I used Safety Restore to fix my seat belts and my SRS module, one of the other things that Safety Restore does is seat belt uh, color changes. Now I didn't want to completely change the color of the seat belts in here from the factory, they're black. So I asked Safety Restore if they could add a blue stripe to my seat belts, kind of in keeping with that uh, police tribute idea. And they said, well, we don't have one stripe, but we can do it with two. And so that's what they've done here. I've got my rebuilt seat belts here. And as you can see, they've added a blue stripe on both sides of my seat belts. These are gonna look really awesome once I get them installed. I've actually got a few other things that I'll be sharing with you a little bit later, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started now reinstalling these seat belts. So let's do that now.
taking the interceptor for a quick drive, testing out our nice new seat belts, which we can actually use now. Uh, I didn't get quite as far today as I had hoped to, uh, but to be honest, it's been a long day and I'm pretty tired. So before I start making some bad mistakes, we're gonna go ahead and cut it here for today. I look forward to the next episode though because I've got some more exciting things that I'm going to show you. Like I said, going to try to make this interceptor into more than just a daily driver, uh, but also something of uh, a police tribute vehicle. And with that in mind, I have some other exciting things. At least they're exciting to me and I hope you are as well. If you've liked the content today and if you're excited about the progress on the interceptor, go ahead and drop a like on this video. And if you're not already subscribed, why don't you go ahead and take care of that today. I've got lots more exciting content content coming here on the Interceptor and a few other projects as well. Click the bell so you can be notified each time I upload a new video and you can also go ahead and find me on Instagram, uh, Twitter, and Facebook. I'll leave links in the description below uh, where I post pictures and videos periodically in between my videos so you can stay up to date on the things that I'm working on. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.